back after a reasonably lengthy hiatus due to a combination of broken teeth, studying for midterms, and then midterms. Um, here we are. Tomorrow we got the live card, Sanchez versus Cantman. Um, it's not the greatest card. It did start off being a pretty promising card, like for a free card. But injuries have killed this card. Just, it's cursed or something. But nonetheless, here we go. Igor Pockerjack, Todd Brown. Todd Brown brings, I think, the better skills in all areas. A lot of people are giving Pockerjack this advantage on the ground. I don't see it. Igor, as much as I hate to speak ill of a fellow Yugoslavian, he doesn't really have UFC-level skills. How he still has a job in this company uh, boggles my mind. His best element is his kickboxing. I don't think he's as good on the feet as Todd Brown is. I don't think he's as good of a wrestler as Todd Brown, despite what Rogan tried to hype him up in the barn fight. He's this great you know, wrestler. Like He has a very solid wrestling background, but he can't take down Stefan Bonner. Um, so I don't really see much of a way for Pocker Jack to win. That being said, um, he's a tough guy. Probably goes to the decision. I give Todd Brown via the unanimous decision. Rosemar Paul Harris versus Dave Branch. Um, Paul Harris, uh, first round tap out. Dave Branch is supposedly a good grappler, but I haven't seen it in any fight he's had yet. Like where where I go, wow, this guy has tremendous skills. Paul Harris is the best leg lock guy at 185. Um, he brings a pretty solid wrestling base with it. Outside of Demi and Maya, no one really wants to go to the ground with this guy, or if they sign Jacare. Um, but outside of Demi and Maya, this goes to the ground. Paul Harris generally will win. Seems to have a reasonably good chin. I mean, outside of the uh, knockout at the hands of Nate Marquardt, where you know he was trying to point out greasing, um, not proven, uh, but that's what he was trying to do, uh, which you don't do. Uh, he should probably win this fight. Dave Branch, I mean, his stand-up is nothing spectacular. Rob Kimmins versus Dungy Yang, the Ox. Not overly interested in this fight, two guys that I just don't think really have UFC-level skills in general. Um, I'm going to go with Rob Kimmins. He's a pretty well-rounded fighter with a good number of like submissions he can put on you with serviceable stand-up with a pretty decent wrestling which is basically what Chris Camozzi was, and Chris Camozzi beat Dongi Yang. So there you go. Going with Kimmins via unanimous decision. Mizugaki versus Ruben Duran. I'm hearing a lot of good things about Ruben Duran. I've seen him fight. I don't see them, personally. He's a good prospect and everything, but I don't see how he's ready for uh, Mizugaki. And maybe someone will point out why they think that is. I think Mizugaki is better in all areas, although not to the point where I see him particularly ending this fight, because Mizugaki is somewhat patient to a decision-type fighter. A lot of the Japanese guys tend to be like that. And I see Mizugaki winning a unanimous decision here, although judging has been weird, weird lately. So any decision I pick could entirely go the other way. Tavares, Tiago Tavares versus Shane Roller. Shane Roller, if he's on his game... Should come out here. Should be able to take down Tavares at will. Should be able to stay out of Tavares' submissions. These are all shoulds. Because Shane Roller, you know, particularly if you look at the Anthony Pettis fight, comes out, doesn't look terribly good. Doesn't look prepared. If he is prepared, he'll come out. He's got far better wrestling. Tavares probably has the advantage on the feet, but Tavares doesn't have that kind of one-punch knockout power where that's a humongous threat if you can out-wrestle him. Take him down. Control him to unanimous decision. Maybe be in some scary moments because Tavares does have the long limbs and very active guard. But I see Shane, Ro Shane Roller should be able to hold his own in this fight and take an EMS decision. Steve Cantwell, Cyril Diabati. Would have been an interesting fight if it wasn't for the current situation with Steve Cantwell, which is he has not fought since the Brian Stan third fight. I think I think that was his last one. He pulled out of a fight with Vladimir Matuschenko due to injury, Stanislav Nedkov due to injury. There's a couple others in there um, I, I, that I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but other people in other videos have discussed this at length. He has a lot of medical problems, has not fought in a while. Ring rust, I think, is a factor. I'm not even sure this fight's going to happen. Somehow today it's going to come out that this fight has been canceled. Um, I have to take Cyril Diabati, despite the fact that 
if this were, you know, a couple like a year or two ago, I would have taken Cantwell in a heartbeat because I feel he has the better well-rounded skills than Diabati, who does have somewhat lapsing wrestling, somewhat lapsing ground game, and also his chin seems to be deteriorating from not having been terribly great to begin with to now he's getting hurt in seemingly every fight. That would have been a type of fight Cantwell would win, but the problem is that Cantwell hasn't fought in so long, he hasn't been healthy in so long, he hasn't shown us what kind of skills he has at this point. I have to take Cyril Diabati probably via the knockout or TKO variety at some point. Second round I'm going to go with if I'm being pressured for a round. Joe Stevenson versus Danny Castillo. Excited for this fight, actually. Um, Joe Stevenson just coming off the loss to Mac Danzig via knockout. These guys are both primarily wrestlers if we want to get down to the down, down to the brass tacks. I think I give Stevens the advantage uh, stand-up-wise and on the ground, and that's pretty big. And he might be the better MMA wrestler. I think Castillo's got the more um, wrestling credentials. But that happens a lot to Stevenson. He does tend to out-wrestle people, so... His MMA, his wrestling in MMA, very well useful. Very deadly guillotine. Power in his hands, if not, and reasonable speed, reasonable technique. You know, lacking reach, but I think he can take down Castillo. You know, I, part of me wants to go with submission, but I, I, I just, for some reason, don't see it. I see Joe Stevenson probably taking a unanimous decision here. Um, which is unfortunate, because I, I, Danny Castillo is a guy who I think can bring a lot to the table, but he's still a developing fighter. Brian Bulls versus Demacio Page. A lot of people asking why this fight is happening because, of course, Brian Bulls already guillotined Demacio Page and looked, you know, pretty good up until that point. Bulls has not fought in 362 days at the time of this fight, so almost a year due to injury. They're giving him this kind of rebuild fight, and while I'm not overly keen on the idea of it being Demacio Page, a guy he has literally already beaten. Um, that doesn't change the fact that he does need a rebuilding fight. We need to see where he is. We need to get him going again. I see him probably winning this fight. I'm going to say, actually by decision, I'm going to say that the ring rust is going to hurt him to the point where he doesn't finish Page, but does win a unanimous decision. A TKO is also pretty possible. So is a submission. I mean, he could come out and look like not a day has passed. Um, but I don't think he will. I think ring rust is going to take a little bit of a, pay, a little bit of a problem. And he's probably going to have to take down Page and just, you know, go with the decision victory. So that's what I'm going with. A lot of guys coming off, like, long layoffs on this card. Lesio Sakara versus Chris Weedman. This is a fight that was supposed to be a number of other people. Weedman, very up-and-coming fighter. Good wrestling base, good grappling. Uh, Stand-up needs work, but he's coming in. Sakara, we know he's got, he's got the amateur boxing experience. He trains with a very tough top team, an American top team. His ground game is always improving, although we don't see it much. But what I think what I think actually really comes into play in this fight is that Sakara is very tough to take down, not because of a great sprawl or great wrestling base, but because he's very good at using his boxing, his footwork, and to keep you away and keep you out of shot range. I see him doing that to Chris Weedman here. I see him just being able to keep it at range. Sakara's quite willing to do the boring fight. He's an example of a boring striker at times. People say, that, oh, a boring striker can't exist. Oh, yes, it can. <laughs> Much like an exciting grappling match can happen, you can have a boring striking match. Um, Sakara, I'm going to take this by unanimous decision. I see him just being able to keep this on the feet. And I don't see Weedman stand up being anywhere near good enough at this point in his career to strike with Alessio Sakara. Weedman very much looking forward to what he turns out to be, but I think this is a bit too much too early. CB Dalloway versus Mark Munoz. Two guys with gas problems. Two guys primarily wrestlers. Two guys, it's stunning that they have gas problems still because you think with the big wrestling background and yeah, being pretty you know veteranized in MMA that you would have develop some cardio, but neither has got it. Um, if this fight doesn't end early via a knockout or a TKO or a submission, it's going to get crappy towards the end because they're pro probably both going to be gassed out. <sighs> that being said, who wins this fight? I don't see either guy getting a finish. Neither guy is exactly known for being great finishers. Munoz got a lot of power in his hands. CB Dalloway does have some, some submissions, but... 
I don't really see that happening in this fight. Comes down to, in my opinion, who's a better wrestler. I think that's got to be Munoz. I think he is more decorated, although I'm, I don't really follow NCAA wrestling, so someone might, you know, throw throw the doll away. He's actually the more decorated one. But in MMA, Munoz is wrestling transitions well despite what seems like a lack of explosiveness i guess he makes up for it with good technique and um sometimes just raw determination to get you to the ground dalway has had problems with other wrestlers he's had problems with people that are not as good of wrestlers as um mark munoz see the uh, goran relgic fight for a bit of an example so I'm taking Munoz via the unanimous decision because I don't really see how he finishes CB. And it could get ugly about halfway through the second round with cardio. Sanchez versus Martin Campman. That is Diego Sanchez. Um, what to say? Diego Sanchez, highly known. I mean, you know, first Ultimate Fighter season one against Kenny Florian in a stomping destruction. We never want to see that again type uh, fight. Martin Campman. Been the more successful recently, of course, uh, recently gave Jake Shields a very hard fight that a lot of people did not think he would. And a lot of people are basing that on, are basing their their pick in this fight on watching a combination of the hard fight that Martin Campman gave Jake Shields and the problems that Diego Sanchez had with John Hathaway. If you look at Diego's fight with Paulo Tiago after the loss to John Hathaway, I think he realized some of those problems and I think he started getting back. Like, he didn't look nearly as for about lack of a better word, basically fat in the Tiago fight, out of shape, soft, whatever you want to call it. He looks like he's getting back a little bit to his old self. His cardio may be coming back, his strength may be coming back, etc. The whole ill-fated 155 trip kind of in the rearview mirror now. As for Martin Campman, we saw him have some success at 185, um, but size became an issue because, of course, he's not even a big 170 er really um he comes down to 170 he looks a little more in place in terms of the size he'd be a really big 155 or so i don't think that that cut is going to be really all that possible but where do these guys skill wise line up martin Cameron, very good striker very good technical striking not particularly the one-stop knockout kind of power ground game is very solid wrestling is ever improving training with extreme couture very good camp diego on the other hand is a guy who uh, has flipped camps a couple times and it uh, doesn't seem to be like being told what see, what he's doing wrong at times. That being said, Diego Sanchez is kind of the type of guy that gives a lot of problems to Martin Campman. He's a guy who should be a better wrestler, is very aggressive, has a very good chin, will come forward, will pressure Martin Campman. We see Martin Campman pressured. Doesn't look too pretty. I mean, Carlos Condit to a certain extent. The Paul Daly fight definitely showed it, although that was a striking style of aggression this is going to be more wrestling style of aggression I think i don't particularly see diego with the submission um because he has not been very finish oriented as of late i think he goes in there i think he can take down martin campman hold him down win a unanimous decision and move back up in the 170 division i mean he's not a guy who's ever going to be an interesting title fighter but it is what it is so that is my picks for UFC Live, Campman versus Sanchez. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.